Hey everyone, Alpha Compton here. Uh, this isn't um, my typical uh, unboxing format, although I probably should have unboxed this product. Uh, this is the 8 bit dough or 8 bit o um, Super Famicom style uh, Pro Controller. Uh, now, what that uh, long naming means is that um, this is essentially a <clears throat> Pro controller or a third-party pro controller for the Nintendo Switch. Um, I do not own a Nintendo Switch, not yet at least. The reason I bought this is because unlike um, the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, this controller can be used with Windows and Android. Um, for a while I've actually been looking for a decent Android controller, but eh, I don't even think that matters anymore. Uh, just the ability to... Paying so much money for a controller that I can only use with one system, considering that the PS4 controller and Xbox 360 and Xbox One controllers are all compatible with Microsoft Windows, makes me feel that paying uh, 50 or 60 or more for a Switch controller would be um, not worth it if it's only able to work with the Switch. I do believe it can work wired with PC, but uh, I don't believe... Uh, wireless as an option this controller um can do all of that it can do it wired it can do it wirelessly over bluetooth like the xbox one s controller and um, it does it for a little less money and it does it in a form factor that i think is really cool and more fun uh especially if you're buying it because you want to do uh you know platforming and two-dimensional gaming um so this is the controller. Uh, it came in a very nice packaging. Uh, it came with a little manual with some uh, basic instructions, many different languages. Um, and it came with a very cool cable, which I definitely like. Um, this is what will be your charging cable. It has a built-in rechargeable battery for, <clears throat> they quote, up to 16 hours. Um, I haven't had a need to recharge it yet been using it for a while i just charged it just for the hell of it uh once but i've had it for uh over a week i think anyway <clears throat> and um one of the things that impresses me is that this uses usb type c which is the future of usb ports it's the way to go um so you know good job to them for that now 8-bit though uh does have some other products uh very similar to this that they've had for a while i could have bought those the reason i did not and i waited for this one is because this one has uh vibration support and motion controls unlike the um older products from 8-bit though um i don't know if the buttons are clicking the uh, analogs on the old one but these are and they feel great um I played around with a lot of controllers, and I, I, I feel like, some, you know, sometimes I'm not easy to please. I kind of just want to have everything. Um, my main controller is actually an Xbox One S controller. I have it here. I have it paired. Um, but I, but I've been playing. I've been found. I found myself playing some 2D games recently um, on Steam, uh, and I actually started to like them. I'm not typically a 2D platformer kind of person, um, except for the old days of Mega Man, and so. Uh, I'm playing this game 20XX. It's a uh, really cool Mega Man like. Um, and yeah, I felt uh, I wanted a better controller and I got this. And I feel like I really am playing much better um, using this. Uh, so, what I wanted to get into, uh, which is why this is not a typical unboxing video, is there's a weird um, bit of, I want to say, misinformation possibly about the rumble of the controller um it's not nearly as loud uh or annoying as uh some of the reviewers would make you think my problem with some of the reviews actually is that um they were using a pre-release model with uh what i would probably describe as pre-release firmware um you know so you can't judge those kind of things uh, pre-release. 
you know, especially in a controller that you can um, update. You know, that's a, that's one of the reasons uh, to give you this cable. You use it to uh, to update the controller, uh, the firmware. And uh, one of the firmware specifically addressed this. Um, actually, out of box, it 1.0 firmware didn't even have um, vibration support when using in the normal X input mode. That was added in a later firmware after the controller came out um you know in mass um so then a firmware came out more recently uh, a few days ago where they did a significant vibration optimization uh what i would say that means is it's more quiet <clears throat> uh i would say that it works the way it's supposed to so you know in those uh earlier videos uh they did not mention that it was using pre-release firmware well you know, it said 1.0, so they probably assumed it's not pre-release. Uh, or this is basically as good as it's going to get. So maybe I can't blame them for that. But they should have mentioned that this is not a product that has been publicly released yet. It was sent by 8-bit though for, um, early for them to look at it. So the final product had to have a firmware update to get the vibration working. So I don't even know what they were doing in those videos. Anyway, so now it's working. They came out with a newer firmware. And, <clears throat> you know, uh, I'll just try to show it to you a little bit. Uh, I downloaded this random app um, <clears throat> on, uh, what you call it, on the Windows Store that can do um, vibration. So here it is. Uh, actually, no, let's, uh, let's look at. Let's do a benchmark. So this is <clears throat> my Xbox One S controller. Um, I don't have the impulse controllers enabled. Um, sorry, vibration motors. Those are louder and that feature is not in the 8-bit though. That's uh, Windows and Xbox One thing anyway. So anyway, so this is this, rum th this rumble motor. And this is the larger one. As you can see, it's vibrating my a small one, large one. All right. <clears throat> so you get an idea what it sounds like there. Now for the 8-bit though, this is a small motor. Right, uh, actually, hold on. Oh, I forgot. You have to press these two. All right, so this is a small motor. And this is a large one. Almost the same. Maybe a little lower. Now, you know, th th this is really quiet in my basement right now. There's there's nothing else here. Um, you know, unless you're playing with headphones on and you have someone who cannot stand any sound at all, including the fan of your computer, uh, you're not going to hear this. Uh, I will admit that... <clears throat> Uh, s some other places where you attempt to uh, use the um, the moto it the motor uh, makes a weird sound like for here in um, big screen in uh, big picture mode on Steam when you click up there it's supposed to vibrate your controller so if I do this it makes a weird sound and this sound was a little longer a little um, maybe a little louder um, in the very first firmware that it comes out of box with, um, so yeah, maybe that's annoying. That that is a little annoying. Uh, I I personally don't find it annoying unless I I'm playing in complete silence. Um, I think it's fine. It's this is the very very light motor. You have to remember um, the regular motor that's going to be rumbling in games that rumble a lot won't be using that motor with that little uh, whine sound. It's going to be using the heavier one, which will be much more silent. It's just going to vibrate a little more. So, you know, uh, I've, I've seen so many complaints, and I, I didn't understand, you know, um, what people were talking about on a product that wasn't, you know, in full release yet, uh, as you could see on Amazon, you know, because I, I pre-ordered it really early. Um... Uh, a while before it came out so um i i had to clarify that because uh you know i just saw an excellent product saw an amazing product getting uh flack for something that wasn't true you know and nobody is putting um 
no one's putting a disclaimer in their videos. Like, uh, maybe, I think there was one guy that said maybe this is early, they sent it to him. But there were several others that did not clarify that. Um, so, uh, in conclusion, um, you know, you, you saw about the vibration motors and stuff. Uh, I just want to say that this controller is awesome. I really like it. Uh, I'm finding myself playing uh, regular games, not just the 2D games. Uh, like, for instance, right now I'm playing uh, Nier Automata. And I'm, I'm able to play it with this controller. Uh, you know, I'm kind of alternating between the two. You know, in case I sometime in the back of my head I just feel like, you know, I'm missing something. But not really. Um, kind of just messing around. It's really fun. Um, I'm able to, like, stand it up here. The It can do everything that your Xbox um, controller can. The only thing is that uh, what I am told is that the Switch doesn't use um, doesn't use um, analog for the R2 and L2 um, the triggers. So it uses digital and here digital as well. So if you're playing a racing game, you won't be able to you know press lightly on the accelerator. I have actually tried playing a racing game with it, just messing around. I thought it was okay because, you know, you'll just let go of the X or you'll just break. A lot of people don't typically play racing games um, using the, the, the sensitivity. It's it's usually just pushing the X all, all the way down um, and letting go or pressing the brakes all the way down and letting go. So, you know, even with that, you you still could play a racing game. Uh, other than that, you know, shooting game, you're, you're usually typically just pressing R2 to shoot and that's it. There's there's no functionality um, holding it, um, you know, lightly or, or midway. So, uh, battery life is pretty good, uh, like I mentioned earlier. Um, those lights at the bottom let you know which mode you're going in. Um, going into different modes is really easy. You just press start and you only press the different buttons. One is switch, one is X input, one is... Um, the D input, uh, I believe, uh, and also for Android, uh, meaning direct input. And then the last one is for Mac OS X. Um, it does not have uh, iOS or iPhone support. They said the MiFi uh, functionality would be an additional cost they didn't want to go into. I'm totally fine with that. Um, you, know, uh, you know, if you're a big gamer, you probably just need X input and switch. Pretty much all you'd need. Uh, so it also has motion co controls, which I haven't gotten to try out. Um, the review said it's fine, uh, so that's cool. This button is basically going to be your guide button, Xbox guide button. The button you press to go into uh, the big screen, big picture mode, um, and also the button you use for other shortcuts, uh, stuff like that. Um, it also has a turbo functionality. Uh, you press this and I think you hold down some other button or something like that. And you're able to select different buttons. Almost any, any button on the controller except for these two, L3 and uh, R3. Uh, other than that, you're able to set turbo buttons uh, for all of them. And, uh, you know, maybe for old school, like, uh, mashing button kind of game, you can do that. So that's cool. The, the instructions are here on the back for uh, the pairing process. Um, well, no, for the mode process. Like, if for which one you need. If you need uh, X input or switch. So, it's not something you'll need to keep the manual uh, nearby for. It's right there on the controller. Um, and the lights let you know. And that's the uh, pairing button there. Yeah. Um... That's pretty much it. Uh, other than that, it's um, it's really cool. I like it. I really do. It it, it just it feels well in the hand. Um, and the grips are just nice. They feel a lot like the PS4 uh, controller. Uh, like someone mentioned, uh, like some of the reviews mentioning, is a little more shallow. Yes, but um, you know, it's not. It doesn't feel restricted. It's definitely something you'll you'll get used to within a day. I, I'd say, maybe less. Um. So yeah, uh, you know, if you're playing PC games, uh, you want to get another controller, or you want to get a controller for platforming, um, I'd highly recommend it. You know, I'd, I'd still recommend, you know, something like the Xbox One S controller for, 
you know, for your main gaming, especially with first person shooters. Um, you know, and racing, you have the impulse controllers and obviously analog control, um, using the, uh, you know, the analog, uh, trigger. But other than that, uh, for everything else, I feel like, uh, this pad is the way to go. You know, it's just small, it's slim, um, you can carry this around. Uh, that was another concern of mine. I can't, I'm not gonna put this in my bag. This is too big, you know? You gotta be realistic. It's, you know, I, I just have a slim little laptop cast, and I'm not gonna carry that around. It, I would be worried about this stuff messing up. Um, this is slimmer. I've already carried this around my bag to a friend's house recently. Uh, it was just fine when I took it out. Um, so, yeah, I played around with it, and, uh, it was, it was really cool, really cool, you know, and it's, it's, it's really solid, uh, my friend did have the original, uh, Super Nintendo controllers handy, and we were comparing them, yeah, they're a little sturdier, maybe a little heavier, but, you know, it's not, um, it's not something that's gonna feel weird, like, you're not gonna feel like you're holding cheap plastic or something, like, this is still pretty solid, it's just, maybe made a little more modern i would say so yeah that is my review and rumble clarification on the 8-bit though uh gamepad uh if you're looking for another controller uh i'd highly recommend it okay so this has been off compton this has been a sort of unboxing um you know i hope you enjoyed it um you know, I'm going to have some more time soon to uh, hopefully upload some other stuff. Yeah. So, thanks for watching.